She was looking for a husband in an on, on an internet dating site, but instead an Oregon woman ended up with herpes. And now a jury has awarded her $900,000 in damages. Abby Gibb explains why. They met on the internet. She, a 51-year-old dental hygienist. He, a 71-year-old retired dentist. She was looking for a husband. Instead, she got herpes. The woman testified that the first time they had sex, she asked him to wear a condom. He said okay, but the next thing she knew, he wasn't wearing one. And it was too late. Afterward, he broke the news. He had herpes. This woman sued her ex for giving her a sexually transmitted disease. She won $1.5 million. Embarrassing TV stories and the resultant lawsuits are very serious and are happening a lot more frequently than you can imagine. Headlines like these clearly demonstrate that sexually transmitted diseases are on the rise, as well as STD transmission cases have been on the rise too. Approximately 13,500 cases of syphilis were reported in 2008. It was on the verge of being an extinct disease in the United States 10 years prior. This means that there is a surge in new cases for this particular STD, and syphilis can be fatal. The other two STDs that have seen a steady rise are HPV and herpes. The STD cases for both of those reach in the millions. There is currently no cure for herpes. In this insider exclusive investigative network TV special, our news team goes behind the headlines in Cedar Rapids, Iowa with Jeff Tronbold, partner at Eels Tronbold, to cover the first successful HPV case ever tried in America. In Sex, Lies, and STDs, Know Your Rights. In this case, Jeff represented freshman Carly Rossiter and won a $1.5 million lawsuit against Carly's ex-boyfriend, Dr. Alan Evans, an Iowa dentist, when she claimed he gave her HPV. He assured me he had been tested and was clean, she told a woman's magazine. It's not right. I wanted him to be held accountable. The verdict was one of the largest in a case of negligent infliction of an STD and included $800,000 in punitive damages. Judge Amanda Potterfield, the only woman on the three-judge panel, wrote the opinion. On the issue of damages, she ruled that the award of punitives was not excessive because the harm caused was not only physical, it concerns the most intimate and private interest, including sexuality and childbearing. Dr. Evans demonstrated a reckless disregard for Rossiter's health and safety. Evans is a dentist. He has received medical training and should be aware of the risk associated with communicable diseases. Yet Evans engaged in numerous sexual acts with Rossiter, repeatedly exposing her to genital warts, HPV, and bacterial vaginitis. In this insider-exclusive Investigative Network TV special, we visit with Carly's attorney, Jeff Tronbold, and Carly as Jeff recounts the legal challenges, hoops, and hurdles they had to go through to finally get Carly justice and establish a moral and legal standard for the protection of other potential victims. Jeff will discuss the issues involved if you want to proceed with an STD case such as the statute of limitations, seeking damages for wrongful transmission of an STD, the evidence necessary to successfully prosecute an STD case, do you have to tell your partner about an STD, criminal and civil laws protecting unaware partners, at least 35 states have laws that specifically criminalize exposing another person to HIV whether or not the virus is actually transmitted. In 29 states, it's a felony. Throughout his career, Jeff has seen many innocent, hardworking people become victimized by businesses, companies, law enforcement, and other individuals, generally all in the name of selfishness. Jeff has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in Cedar Rapids, in Iowa, and across the nation. He makes it a dedicated mission to get legitimate and truthful answers to what really happened to his clients in each case. And because of that, he is driven to fight for people who have been harmed by the willful and negligent actions of others. Jeff has built a substantial reputation nationwide by consistently winning cases other law firms have turned down and his amazing courtroom skills and headline-grabbing success rate continue to provide his clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. 
This is the Insider Exclusive, live from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. It is my great pleasure to introduce Jeff Tronbold to the show. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Thank you. Tell our audience a little bit about your firm. What kind of law do you guys practice? Our, our law firm is a general practice firm in Iowa, but we primarily focus on personal injury and employment law. Personal injury being people who've been hit in an automobile crash, somebody who's experienced medical negligence or malpractice, mm -hmm. or people who've been wrongfully terminated from their job. And I notice you keep saying that word people, the little guy, right? Yep, that's primarily who we help. You could practice, I mean, you could have went to work for IBM or, or ADM or any of the major Fortune 500 companies, but you choose to represent the little guy. Why is that? It, it, it's when I go to bed at night and wake up in the morning and look in the mirror, I know that I've helped somebody, yeah. I've helped change somebody's life. And you really do because a lot of these, you know, the law is so complicated today that an individual who tried to represent themselves would be SOL, wouldn't they? It sort of goes back to that old saying, who has the greatest fool for a client. Yeah, but still, <laughs> you know, but still there's a lot of forms to fill, there's deadlines to meet, and a lot of the language is kind of difficult to begin with in the first place, right? Oh, very, and they've, they do, there are minefields all throughout that yeah. if you miss something by one day or don't mail it to the right address, you're out of luck. We are here today because you prosecuted and represented an individual, Carly Rossiter, who this was the first case in the United States that you got a successful verdict on the transmission of STDs, correct? Correct. For the and human, the liability, the liability of it, correct? For the human papilloma yeah. virus, correct. Tell our audience a little bit about who Carly is. Carly's a, a young lady who grew up here in Iowa, had gone to a dental practice for years, and that dentist decided to retire and sold her practice to a man named Alan Evans. Mm -hmm. Uh, Carly went in for a checkup because that was the dental office she'd always gone to and Dennis was a little flirtatious with her and one thing led to another and eventually they started to date. Yes. And they had the STD talk, um, four hours worth yeah. of, you know, have you been tested, have you ever been right. exposed to anything? Precautions, right? Doing the responsible yeah. thing. Yeah. And he said, hey, I'm in the medical field, I'm fine. And one day they became more intimate. And after that encounter, he brought up the fact that, you know, have you ever been tested for HPV? Yeah. Carly, what's HPV? Yeah. Well, that, it's another STD they don't normally test for. And against medical advice, against having a, 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 a clean pap smear months prior, she went to her doctor and said, I'd, I'd like to get this test. And the doctor's like, you don't need it. Well, she said, I want it. And they said, well, if you get it, insurance isn't going to pay for it because it's not needed. And she went and got it. And the results were she was infected. Right. Then what happened? Well, a lot of women just naturally can, what they call, clear this disease. They'll just go away. Some people aren't even aware they've ever had it. Yeah. Uh, another group of women can have anywhere from cells that get inflamed or upset, for lack of a better term, all the way to progression to cervical cancer. In Carly's case, within one year, it had progressed to the, the highest stage of lesion, which is a precancerous condition. Mm -hmm. And she had also discovered that he had also transmitted warts to her. Mm -hmm. What happened then? Well, she had to go through a series of tests, one called the colposcopy, which confirmed the condition and ultimately had a leap performed where they literally take an electric wire that, that shaves off the top layer of the cervix to try to clear out the disease. Yeah. And after that procedure, she looked for an attorney to see if she could get any help in bringing this man to justice and yeah. eventually found us. We're going to have her on later in a minute, but she wanted him to be accountable, didn't she? Because he had caused her, as you're talking about, a lot of problems. And these are lifelong problems, aren't they? Yes. You know, it's not something that in her situation is going away. What was your legal strategy in, in, in representing her in this case? Because this was an unusual case, right? Right. This isn't like a lot of your STDs where there's 
a, a direct incubation period that yeah. you get exposed, you're going to have it in six days or six weeks. Yeah. There are theories out there that HPV can lie dormant inside of somebody's system for years. Mm -hmm. So we had to, to find expert witnesses and read the literature to determine, hey, was it Mr. Evans that gave her this STD? And how did you come to that determination? Studying the literature and working with an expert witness in Wisconsin who ended up being one of the lead spokesmen for the drugs Gardasil, which prevent HPV in mm -hmm. people, uh, we, we learned that it was more likely than not that Mr. Evans was the one who transmitted this disease to her and given the timing the, of the progression of the disease. Right. What was his response, by the way? No, he, he's to this day. He yeah. denies that he ever had it or gave it to her. Okay, and what were some of the specific challenges that you had in this case? You know, when you go before a jury. Well, in front of a jury, you know, the easy thing would be, well, where's his test? Yeah. <laughs> there is no FDA-approved test for men to confirm whether they have HPV or they don't. Okay, but then someone's own personal sex life is going to be made public, isn't it? Oh, in, in case of Carly, she was brutally drugged through every sexual encounter she'd ever had in her life. Right, in a deposition, I would imagine. Well, he did it in the courtroom uh, in as the well. Courtroom. Trying to show that she was, let's say, a woman of, uh, of the night or something like that, right? Yes, it, was, it wasn't a favorable recitation of facts. Yeah, and, and that's one of the reasons we're here. She was very courageous in doing this because she knew you obviously had forewarned her that she would go through this embarrassing uh, attack on her character, right? Yes. Um, but at the same time, you put him on the stand, right? That's correct. And what evidence were you able to get out or what testimony were you able to get out of him? Well, one of the interesting things is as the case developed, it appeared that he, he, well, he was also seeing another girl behind Carly's back at yeah. the time. And there may he may have been passing back and forth a condition called bac bacterial vaginosis between the two women. Yeah. Uh, during questioning, he was asked why he didn't do anything or look into the fact that bacterial vaginosis may be an issue. His response was, well, I don't have a vagina. Yeah. Just a, a total non-caring, non-concern. Yeah. What was the end result of the case? He went to a jury. The jury deliberated and came back with a verdict totaling $1.5 million. 800,000 of which was punitive damages, right? Correct. Sending a message to society as well as the doctor that, hey, you can't do this to people and get away with it, correct? Correct. What, and the case was appealed? It, but they did appeal and they lost. Yeah. So it was upheld. It was paid. Correct. Well, congratulations on that because I think it's the first HPV, successful HPV uh, prosecution of a case in America, isn't it? That is. Um, today we are fortunate to have Carly with us, so let's bring her on right now. It is my great pleasure to introduce Carly Rossiter to the show. Welcome to the show, Carly. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I understand you came all the way from Arizona, right? Yes, I did. This was a big case. You know, we know the facts of the case, but you actually lived through this. And what impressed me the most about your story is the courage it took, and I mean this sincerely, the courage it took to come forward and, as Jeff probably informed you well in advance, basically lay your life out there so everybody could see it, right? Mm -hmm. And that was tough uh, along the way, wasn't it? Yes, it was very difficult. It was probably one of the hardest things I've ever been through in my life to date. You know, what made you decide, I mean, was the key momentum that you decided to take action against uh, Dr. Evans? Um, I think it was uh, the concern of this happening to someone else and yeah. never having any accountability. Um, and I thought it was, it was really my only choice. I didn't know how I could go on with my with my life and career without confronting what happened and making yeah. sure it didn't happen to anyone else. Yeah, now along the way, obviously, there was a million and a half dollar verdict, you know, substantial verdict. But you never, and, and I mean this sincerely, you never went into this to make money, did you? No, not at any point in time. And I think, didn't you mention before the show, what did you tell your lawyer? What did you tell Jeff? When we were in the middle trial, I turned to Jeff and I said, I, if there's a verdict in our favor, I said, I don't care. I'm like, you can have 
all of the money. This isn't about that. Yeah. Now, you're a lawyer yourself, aren't you? Yes, I am now. Um, so you are an advocate, and I understand you help children these days, but you're an advocate for people, and you have become an advocate for other women. How, you must have, along the way, met a lot of other women who said, I wish I had the guts to do what you did, right? Yes, it's not for everybody. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult path. Um, I, I definitely have told people to think about it very carefully. Yeah. Um, and they're not all winnable, but um, I just think it's important for people to know that when this happens, it's, it's wrong and yeah. it needs to be addressed and they have rights. You're on national TV right now. What do you have to say to everybody watching this show women as well as men in regards to what they should do if they think that they have been um, tra been transmitted a STD and they weren't aware of it by, by someone that they're seeing? That they've had it given to them? Yeah. It depends on um, everybody's situation. I mean, was it, do they think it was intentional? Do they think it was an accident? Yeah. Um, I, I think it really depends on everybody's personal situation. Mm -hmm. um, and just the facts and the circumstances and what the person is comfortable with. Not everything needs to go to a lawsuit. Yeah. Though. Now Jeff told me that you, prior to coming to him, that you had to undergo a lot of medical treatment. Yes. When was the when was the time? When did the time come that you decided that you wanted to hold Dr. Evans legally responsible? Um, I think it was after I had uh, really started to come to terms with what had happened and how severe it was, yeah. um, the pre-cancer, and I dealt with all that. And then I was, you know, in a different point in my life, and I realized I'm also going to have to tell everybody about this and yeah. look how much it's affected me and how much could it affect me down the road. Um, it's it's. It's a lifetime thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, again, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you took the courage because you had to really bear your soul in this case. And it's grueling, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it's part of it. Um, I mean, you almost feel like you're the person that's being attacked, right? At times. Right? Definitely. What were you advising her during all this time, Jeff? Just hang in there and tell the truth? Well, you know, it's always the first thing is to yeah. tell the truth, yeah. but just it, it is what it is and not every, there's no case that doesn't have yeah. obstacles or challenges. Now, as a result of this case, um, li legal liability has been somewhat advanced in America, correct? Holding people responsible. I want to talk about some of the legal liability statutes that are in place right now, like, for example, um, the issue of statute of limitations. How does that play in a case like this? Well, in Iowa, the <clears throat> for personal injury, the typical statute of limitations is two years. Two years. You have the argument with an STD when somebody knew or should have known it was transmitted. So you'd have the act, which was the actual transmission, right. but then there's the incubation period. Right. What so, about the date of discovery? That, that's, you know, I guess, If it's I incubation, it's really longer than two years, isn't it? It can be, but I wouldn't yeah. want to take the risk. I would always go, if you know the the act where the transmission occurred yeah. to be safe, I'd go with that date. What is the evidence necessary to successfully prosecute an STD case? Well, and if you have herpes or AIDS or something that has yeah. a known incubation period and you can test the other individual for that disease to confirm whether they have it or not, yeah. th that can get you most of the way there to establish liability. H for, for everybody that's watching this show, you know, and some people have STDs. What is their legal responsibility in telling and informing someone that they might be seeing in advance of any kind of intimate relationship? Well, if the standard, if you know or should know that you've been exposed to or have a disease, you have an obligation to tell that individual yeah. of that fact. Yeah. Carly, do you do speaking engagements now on this subject? No, I haven't, um, aside from a few uh, events, being yeah. on other shows and magazines, <clears throat> no, nothing, nothing right. like that. Do women seek you out asking your advice? Uh, quite frequently. And what type of questions do they ask you? They mostly want to know what, what they can do. They want me to know the situation. A lot of the times I think they just want someone to talk to yeah. that they identify with. Um, usually they're not in where I'm at, so I can't really advise them, but um, 
you know, I can tell them they need to seek out an attorney if they want to consider that and mm -hmm. um, just kind of be an ear at the very least. Right. What do you tell them that they're going to go through in the process? Um, every detail is going to come out about your sex life yeah. and um, you're going to be looked at um, in, through different lenses and they're not all going to be good but right. it's part of the process and so you have to be prepared for that it's not going to be easy it's not going to be fun yeah now in this particular case the dr evans was a dentist he was i guess a respected dentist and still is i would imagine correct um you had that to deal with with a young lady who's making allegations and claims and the problem you had in this case was you really couldn't prove with any kind of evidence that he had the disease, correct? That's correct. And that's a tough one. You have to look at the timing, correct? That's right. Yeah. Um, well, we really appreciate you know you coming on the show. Do you have anything else to tell America right now about if they have a situation like yours, what they should do besides getting a lawyer? What kind of lawyer should they look for, by the way? Um. I, I guess uh, somebody you can trust and somebody yeah. that'll uh, speak directly and frankly with you. But mm -hmm. um, just I would say just to know that you're not alone, you're not the only one, and um, y you don't have to take legal action. But it's not the end of the world. You can still you can still cope with it, and you'll survive it. <laughs> After everything, are you glad that you came forward and you? were involved with this lawsuit? Yes, absolutely. It made me, um, it made me a stronger person um, and better for having gone through it. So I'm very glad that I did. Well, I want to thank you very much. We want to thank you very much for both of you being on the program. And congratulations on your lawsuit. And we certainly hope people pay attention to this and they're more responsible, right? Yes, we do. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.